Hello, this is Ralph back again with another video. And with this video, what I want to do is just kind of teach how to do divination with ordinary playing cards. Uh, when I was about six years old, back in the 1960s, a while back, my uh, grandmother, who was of Irish traveler descent, decided to try to teach me how to do divination with playing cards. And quite honestly, at that point in time, I was more interested in learning how to play Go Fish. I wasn't really that interested in learning how to do divination. But she did go ahead and teach me the basics. And then uh, when I got a little bit older, got into high school, I got my first deck of uh, tarot cards and took a really keen interest in learning tarot and... Uh, kind of applied what I learned from my grandmother to the tarot cards and tarot cards back to playing cards and back and forth a little bit. And what I've developed over the years is a, uh, a pr pretty common, actually, style of uh, how to do divination with ordinary playing cards. Now, to start out with, let's take a look at the suits and the elemental qualities of the suits. Now, the Ace of Clubs, or, or clubs in general, clubs uh, in, in my system uh, tend to, uh, they, they, they coordinate with wands. So whereas wands deal with fire and action and creativity, that's how I see the clubs. The clubs deal with fire just like the wands do. So uh, anything with about action, creativity, passion, I see that as being what the suit of wands entails. Now with the uh, the hearts, now the hearts relate to cups. And of course cups, they deal with water, the element of water, love, and emotion, uh, you know, uh, happiness, uh, love and relationships kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, when, you, when I see hearts, I always think of cups. Now, with spades, uh, that I, I relate to swords. And the element there is the element of air in, in my system of thought. And of course, air deals with thought and mental activity. And then finally, diamonds. Diamonds uh, in, in my system relate to pentacles. And uh, that deals with the element of earth and that deals with wealth and materiality. So, uh, yeah, the four suits, uh, clubs, uh, correspond with wands, hearts correspond to cups, spades correspond to swords, and diamonds correspond to pentacles. Now, the numbered cards, uh, the ones, Generally, I see that as being new energy, uh, new beginnings. Uh, the twos, harmony, balance. Sometimes I kind of think of the twos as being like mini lover cards. Uh, the three, the threes, uh, public partnerships, uh, creative uh, uh, enterprises that require uh, networking in public ways and things like that. Four, I see as, you know, stability, uh, solid foundation, things not really moving forward, but being in a very good spot. Five, uh, the fives, dealing with change, sometimes struggle, sometimes progressing ahead, sometimes creative struggle, but yeah, things in a uh, in a, a, a position of flux and change. And then the sixes uh, deal with perseverance and uh, pushing ahead, uh, leaving the troubled past behind and, uh, you know, seeking out uh, better things, uh, progressing ahead. The sevens, I see that as being perfection or experience. Uh, things just moving on as they should. And then the eight. Eights deal with advancements. So 
full steam ahead, things things moving ahead, and uh, or or problems with uh, things moving ahead. And then the, the nines. Uh, nine is a number of completion. So uh, yeah, things coming to an end, things being complete. And then the tens. Uh, ten is always end of cycle. So whatever you're in, when you see a ten, that cycle is over. Time to prepare for the next cycle. So that's a brief breakdown on the numbered cards. Now the face cards, this is where it gets interesting because in tarot, you know, you've got uh, the page, you've got the knight, you got the queen, you got the king. With an ordinary deck of playing cards, you've got the jack, queen, king. And I tend to view the jack as being the knight. And I, I give it that interpretation, the knight being a card of action. Uh, you can also, though, see the jack as being a page, in which a page can be like, you know, a student just getting things started, new enterprise, new beginning, that sort of thing. Uh, <laughs> you can kind of give it whatever interpretation you like, whatever, whatever kind of suits your mood, whatever your intuition tells you to do. But uh, usually when I see a jack, I think knight. Now, the queen, of course, is the queen, and I tend to think of the queen as being a mentor, teacher, uh, mastery, wisdom, uh, patience, you know, patient teacher, patient mentor. Uh, so that's normally how I see the, the queen. Uh, and the king, finally, excellence and mastery. Uh, you're, you're at the top of your game when you see the king. So that's the, the, the numbered cards and the face cards. Now, one I did not uh, deal with in this presentation is the Joker. And the Joker, you know, you can see that as being the same as the Fool. That's the interpretation I generally give to the Joker. And, uh, yeah, you can see it as a Fool, New Beginnings, Pioneer, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, another... Uh, Meaning you could give to the fool, though, is that you could see the fool as being uh, like the magician. Now, uh, I tried that in a few readings, and I mean, I just don't feel that really that really fits. But if it works for you, you can try it. Uh, but uh, generally, yeah, the fool to me is just, I mean, the joker to me is kind of like the fool. Now... Let's try what we've just gone over in a sample reading. Now, bear in mind, we're going to have a few difficulties here. If you're used to uh, reading tarot cards uh, and you're, you, you start doing divination with playing cards, there's a couple challenges right off the bat that we can talk about. The first is that there's no such thing as a reversed meaning for the cards. The cards have no reverse. There, there's no reversals possible with playing cards. So you have to interpret each card as it is, as it is unless your intuition tells you to give it a reversed meaning. Uh, if you see a card as representing a challenge, then I would say, okay, you might consider a reversed meaning for that card. But for the most part, I don't really uh, mess with reversed meanings. I just uh, read cards in the upright position most of the time. Now, uh, again, I, I use my intuition to tell me uh, if I should give a, a reversed meaning to a particular card. And uh, for me, that, that's worked out pretty well since the 1970s. Now, another problem uh, that, well, another thing that might be seen as a problem is that we don't have the uh, major arcana. So you're just dealing with the, uh, the lesser arcana and then plus uh, perhaps an extra face card and an extra card being the fool. But now, or, or the, uh, <laughs> the joker. But now here for the sample reading, 
what I've given, I just picked out three cards at random. Uh, past, present, future spread, three card spread. And let's just say that this is a love and relationship type reading. Uh, let's say a lady comes and uh, asks about her boyfriend. He's been kind of distant as of late and she wants to know what's going on. What is his energy for, you know, their relationship? And let's say, okay, we pulled the three of hearts. Three of hearts corresponds to three of cups. So there we have like, you know, public uh, relationships, uh, party time is how I would see that in the light of that question. And uh, yeah, things going pretty well in the past. Now for the present, we have the five of, of uh, diamonds and that corresponds to pentacles. And there we're dealing with flux, we're dealing with change. So yeah, there's been a definite change in the relationship. And if I wanted to read the elemental quality of that card, then keep in mind that yeah, uh, diamonds correspond to the, the world of wealth, finance, job, that sort of thing. I would say there is probably a, a, a problem uh, dealing with money, dealing with job, some sort of change that is taking place in uh, the financial uh, life of, of, of the boyfriend that has him uh, preoccupied. And that may be the reason why he is acting distant. So uh, yeah, just normal flux, normal ebb and flow Sometimes things are looking really well, uh, where things are really good, and then things suddenly start to look not so good. It's just a normal ebb and flow. Uh, good times, bad times, good times, bad times. And uh, that's what I see going on with this reading, that he's been preoccupied, but, uh, you know, don't worry, just a normal, normal change going on. Now with the future, now this card for that question looks pretty good. We got the king of clubs and that corresponds to wands. And uh, yeah, the king uh, means he's coming back. He's gonna be back on top of things. Things are gonna be going pretty much as they were. And maybe even look out because yeah, he's gonna be back with the old fire, the old passion, and uh, yeah, things will work themselves out. So, I mean, there you have it. Just a, a short little sample reading using three cards drawn at random. Uh, I encourage you, if you uh, want to try uh, reading using playing cards, to go ahead. You can use uh, this video as a guide and uh, just, just play around with it and see what you think. Uh, if you're thinking about getting a deck of tarot cards, but maybe, you know, finances are a little tough right now, you don't have the money to buy a deck of tarot cards, you can go ahead and get started with playing cards using this system. And then feel free to change it around and, uh, and suit it to, uh, to fit your needs. And as always, thanks for dropping by. Please leave me your questions and comments. Uh, if there's something I did not cover in this video that you'd like me to cover uh, later on in a future video, please let me know. Uh, and also be sure to give a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you do subscribe, press the notification button so uh, you'll know whenever I come up with a, a new video. And until later, take care and we will see you, talk to you later. Bye-bye.